Hello and welcome to Central London on this day three of London Film Festival and I've seen a bunch of films and we're going to talk about them. The first film I saw was Manticore, the new Carlos Vermut film. It was really well shot and it's already got this uh, reputation of a film that really challenges the audience's empathy and it, it did that pretty successfully. But ultimately the film kind of fell flat for me. There were two really great central performances, particularly by Nacho Sanchez, but ultimately uh, the film script, the pacing was not very good, the second act just dragged, and then the third act kind of went from zero to 100 really, really quickly, which kind of diminished uh, the impact of the final scene, and it kind of feels a bit overwritten in an unnatural way. It's a lot of characters telling stories, and it doesn't feel like how people really speak, so the film had a lot of potential, but ultimately I would give it a 5 out of 10, unfortunately. Uh, the next film I saw was Klondike. This is Ukraine's entry for the Oscars this year. Uh, it had absolutely meticulous direction by Marina E. Gorbash. Like, there were a lot of really, really well-crafted scenes, lots going on in the foreground, lots going on in the background, really complicated kind of choreography with vehicles that I thought worked really well. And the film has a really good message about how you can't be apolitical during extraordinary times. It's set in the Donbass region in 2014 after the initial Russian invasion there, so it's very timely uh, at the moment. And the film has a really good, absurdist sense of humor. At the start of the film, the central couples, their building gets bombed and they have this hole in their living room, and it's, it's used for a lot of kind of almost kind of slapstick jokes, and that works really well. But the film sort of didn't sustain itself for an hour and a half, unfortunately. Uh, the characters are really well written, but they're not that deep, and it just sort of meanders for its entire plot. Uh, so it kind of it left me feeling a bit disconnected, unfortunately. I think there's a lot of good in this film, and the direction is outstanding, uh, but ultimately, I, I think it's a 6 out of 10. The final film I saw was Medusa Deluxe. This is a one-take murder mystery whodunit set in a competitive hairdressing competition, which is, I mean, an absolutely really good concept. It's Thomas Hardiman's directorial debut. Uh, the hair in it, because that would be the first thing, is fantastic. It's like a perfect pastiche. It's, it's absolutely hilarious, but it doesn't feel like it's sort of implausible, you know? Like, it very much feels like this actually could be taken seriously, uh, but it's a joke and it works great. And the use of the building is really good too. It's a one-take film that sort of characters are wandering around this building, but unfortunately that's kind of where the compliments end. You know, it doesn't feel like when we're following characters around this building, it doesn't feel like anything else is happening. Like, this murder has just happened. You'd think like the entire building would be in pandemonium, but it really feels like the only events you're seeing is with the camera, and that's really unfortunate. Uh, except for a couple of moments as well, it just wasn't really interestingly shot. There's a lot of shallow depth of field, and that gets tiring kind of quick, a kind of visual monotony, and uh, most unfortunately as well, all the characters' voices just sort of blend into each other. You don't really have a very interesting script, and that's a real shame for this film that had so much potential. The music, though, the music is absolutely great. Uh, really interesting film score. The, the casting was clearly great, all these actors are great, it's just a shame the, the direction is a bit less so. Unfortunately, everyone's performances being just so elevated just does not help. Ultimately, I have to give it a 4 out of 10, but it's an interesting film, and I'm really sure that Hardiman and everyone involved in this film are going to do so much good in the future.